Here's what some people are saying about the Projection Booth podcast. The Projection Booth is single-handedly the greatest film podcast you could ever listen to or could possibly want. Top notch. Five stars. This has quickly become one of my favorite film-related podcasts. Always interesting. A completely unpretentious yet fully comprehensive look at films from all genres. The Projection Booth podcast with new episodes available every week at projectionboothpodcast.com. Listening to the In the Mouth of Dorkness podcast, the official podcast of the Alamo Draft House Winchester. Here are Brad, Lisa, Brian, and Darren. Welcome to another edition of the It Modcast podcast. With me is Brian Young, the Turtle Dork. Happy Friday, everybody. Yep. And also joining us is Lisa Gullickson, wife Dork. Scoot down the road. What's my number? I wonder how your engines feel. Za da da. And Brad Gullickson, <laughs> mouth door. They feel pretty good, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host, Darren Smith, the Disco Dork. And welcome to the It Modcast podcast, Fistful Friday, 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 yeah. Friday, Friday. Happy Lisa. Friday. Boop, 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 Lisa and I just celebrated eight years of marriage. <laughs> yes, Yay. we did. Happy anniversary. Yay. We remembered. T-G-I-F-F. Um, welcome to the weekend, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining us this Friday in honor of the recently released Baby Driver, Which Edgar Wright's amazing. latest. Uh, yes, if you haven't seen it, go see it. If you've seen it, go see it again. Uh, we have a fistful of drivers. And in honor of this fistful of drivers, we have a handful of alcohol, chartreuse. <laughs> uh, Why chartreuse, Brad? Because of Death Proof? Yeah. Yes, uh, if you've not seen that film, shame on you. If you have, you would know that Tarantino makes a cameo in the film in the bar. Uh, he presents the group with a, a beverage called Chartreuse. Yes, it's uh, green. It's green. It's the. It's so good they named a color after it. Yeah, there you go. Good being subjective, but it is green. <laughs> All right, we're going to toast to Baby Driver. Baby, baby Driver. Oh yeah, toast the fistfuls and baby drivers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and destroyed livers. All right, dragon All right, pee, go. Let's go. I think you'll get diabetes before you destroy your liver. That's sweet. <laughs> Stings the nostrils. You guys are whips. My teeth are burning. <laughs> uh, that's good. I'm though. expecting. That's yummy. That's good. Stuntman Mike to be on one of your lists. Uh, but spoilers, not on mine. Not on mine either. We, oh my God. we will see. <laughs> Is Darren okay? I think we just be... drank in honor of a fistful of driver. I'm pretty sure we just drank gasoline. <laughs> like diesel. Like high octane. The one thing that is guaranteed is that none of us should drive immediately. Fuck. That was shot five for me. Oh yeah, Brad has been downing this stuff for all three recordings we've Ooh. been doing. And this sweet recording All sesh. right. <clears throat> Look, Brian's loosey goosey over there. <laughs> Why right, I recording that video? <laughs> Brian, <laughs> I'm good. Though. Start this off with number five. You're a fistful of drivers. Okay, where do I want to start? I got a couple on my list that I like here. You know what? I didn't really like the movie, but I thought this opening sequence was pretty fucking badass. Oh, uh, that would be Transformers. Dri- driver. The last night. Oh. Not the movie. That's the, that was his name, Ryan Gosling and Drive. You don't the, like Drive? Yeah, I need to rewatch that film. You I didn't like I mean? Drive. You can give me a five. There you go. <laughs> that rhyme. I like that. Wait, what? What rhyme? I, I Drive in five. I didn't like Drive. Driving you five. can give me five. There you go. I'm yeah. a poet, <laughs> and you know it. Mm, feet ah! show it. They're Longfellows. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> What's going on? All anyway, right. but no. Um, yeah, I, I love that opening sequence in Drive when, uh, you know, you have the heist and then he's uh, he's evading the cops and then uh, he hides behind the truck and then he goes to the, the Clippers game. And it's, it's very like it's not like one of those type of uh, car chase scenes where it's like high octane, high speed car chases. But it doesn't feel phony baloney. Yeah, it, do, it really doesn't feel phony. Like the way Nicholas Winding Refn really uh, treats that scene and handles that scene and shoots that scene um, and the way he shoots the city of Los Angeles throughout that whole film, 
thought was just expertly done. And that opening sequence really shows you um, how how good of a driver Ryan Gosling is in that movie. Darren, you don't like that movie? With drive? Yeah. Oh, I did drive. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> I mean, I don't I don't hate it. It's just it wasn't what I expected okay, coming Lance from Armstrong? Tony Hawk. No, I Tony <laughs> Hawk. Uh, was Matt Hoffman. The other BMX dude. I'm impressed <laughs> that you knew two bikers. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, I'm, I was I went outside. And I wasn't always just a video game kid in the house. You know, I, I rode BMX. I was a BMX bandit. Uh, shout out to uh, Nicole Kidman. I, I would have to movie. go to florists. Oh. For, for my pedals. I had a, I had a, ah, oh. see the witty shit, man. Ah, God damn, Lisa. I, know. I, had, I, had a, I had a cruiser like Pee Wee. <laughs> Where do you get that shit from? She just off oh, the Pee-wee. top with it. Yeah. Pee Wee's a good. The one. beach cruiser, yeah. Red and Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Pops will be extra on bike. Yeah, it doesn't sound at all like we just had shots. Shit. All right, Lisa, you're number five. Are we on Lisa? Are we no, still on five? No, I don't think he's done. Yes, no, he I is. was done, but He's I think Brad, Brad had a point. Did you have a point? Yeah, we're drunk. <laughs> I like Drive. I love Drive. Drive's a great movie. No, I, I know you it's like boring. it. It's boring. There's I, not enough talking in it. <laughs> Too much driving. Too much driving. It's drive. The talking. <laughs> you must really love uh, Only God Forgives. Oh, <laughs> T-Dub. It's so that. far up its own ass. That's Ooh. why it's red. That's <sighs> Wow, I need, to, the I need to watch. That's oh. on Netflix, and I've been wanting. I know you love that film, it's but I need to. Great movie. I need to. I need you to better watch. watch it with Brad. Then don't, I know. don't I watch know. that one alone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, Lisa, you're number five, and your fist full of drive. My number five uh, was spurred. I guess it's in honor of our upcoming film club. My number five driver is Argyle. Oh. Whoa, Die Hard. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me, Darren. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's my number four. Go ahead, oh, Lisa. Oh, no way. Great mind. Fix them levels. Um, so he's the limo driver that picks up John McClane from LAX to take him to Nakatomi Plaza. Yep. And even though it's only his first day as a limo driver, you can tell that he is going to have a wonderful career yeah. ahead of him because he's all about customer service. Yep. Especially after this experience. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, so... I, I love in the the beginning of the film, you know, John McClane is not comfortable. He's not going to sit in the back of the limo, yeah, so yeah, he yeah. sits up front with Argyle, and they're yeah. chatting it up. And and uh, you know, clearly his years of being a taxi driver come in handy. He has, you know, he's he's sociable. Argyle's sociable, and then um, and he's willing to wait and see what's going to happen um, if John McClane is going to stay. Um, or leave with Holly. So um, so that's wonderful. And then um, while he's waiting, he makes the most of his time listening to Stevie Wonder and um, hitting up that limo bar. And then when when push came to shove, Argyle did save the day. He did. Yeah. R- ramming the uh, ambulance and punching out Theo. And punch Theo to death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Theo. What a great driver. Yeah. That's Argyle's why Argyle's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it was self defense Yeah. He, he saw that things with that ambulance were not... On the up and up. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's why Argyle's my number five. All and right. Darren's number four, apparently. Good pick. Uh, <laughs> Brad, you're number five. If you have the opportunity to see Baby Driver at an Alamo draft house, do so. Because they have a killer... Uh, pre-show. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Probably mm-hmm. the best pre-show I have seen uh, in a long time mm-hmm. at the Alamo Draft House. Edgar Wright does a series of top fives, top five uh, car crashes, a top five uh, songs to rob a bank to. And then he does a top five car chase, obviously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that top five, he lists Bullet. The Steve McQueen film. Yep. Yeah. And it is an epic chase. And yes. it's a chase that I did not appreciate until I saw it at the Alamo Draft House on the big screen when yes. they did their uh, Secret Society of Filmmason screening of Bullet. It's terrifying. It's it's amazing. It's great. It's absolutely awesome. That driver is not my pick. <gasps> Frank Bullet? No? No. The driver that's my pick for number five is Harlan Rook as played by David Hunt in Dirty Harry in the Deadpool, which references Bullet by having Harry Callahan's cop car chased 
by a miniature Dodge Charger remote control with a bomb inside. And so it's this insane car chase Hmm. that's done uh, remotely through this little RC. And if the RC drives underneath Harry Callahan's car, Harlan Rook, the serial killer, can hit a button and blow up Harry Callahan. So it's this really ridiculous, totally 80s action sequence that does replicate the scenes from Bullet with a tiny toy car chasing after Clint Eastwood's Dirty Harry. So it's like uh, this film again? The, it's the final Dirty Harry film, The Deadpool. Jim Carrey's in it. So and Jim Carrey is. So it's kind of like uh, Tom Selleck's Runaway. That one scene where he has the remote. Con- that dude has the remote control, like little hover things that are on the highway, and they go up under the cars and blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I need that on Blu-ray. Uh, <laughs> the The Deadpool is like Brian says with his opinion on. Drive is inaccurate. Opinion on drive. <laughs> <laughs> Not a great movie, and n- probably the weakest entry in the Dirty Harry franchise. I agree, but I love the playfulness and the silliness of this remote control car chase, and how you know, like in Bullet, they're going down the hills of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. It does highlight. The insanity of that topography, um, yeah. So the Deadpool slash Bullet. That's my number five. All right, um, I'm calling Audibles now. My number five <laughs> was going to be Han from Fast and Fast and Furious, but Tokyo Drift. Yeah, oh. Tokyo Drift. Uh, but I decided to go with a, a recent, uh, another recent entry on Brad's fistful of Tom Cruise, and that's Cold Trickle. From oh. Days of Thunder. Star. He was oh. on my list, too. Oh, uh, yeah. I was thinking um, that, too. I, since we've had that discussion, I've been, I've been itching to see that film again. Uh, I recently yes. listened to that episode. And, um, the during movie's that, a ton of fun. Yeah. During, you know, during that discussion, I'm, I'm listening to it. I'm just picturing that movie. And I'm going, man, there's so many blanks that I, I, I have regarding my memory of that film that I, I, I'm itching to fill them in. <laughs> and we had a fun discussion. And it just it stemmed from a pretty fun movie. I, I do remember... Uh, yeah, that being a fun watch, it's so I'm looking forward to checking totally it out. Totally, Tony Scott. Yeah, I, I, I for me, I, I just want to go back and look at that rivalry uh, between he and Michael Rooker and how that turns into uh, seen that in the. A while. Uh, You're gonna the, the fall friendship. in love with Nicole Kidman all over again. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't even to, remember her in that film. Yeah, I need to rewatch. How long that. so yeah. great in that movie? I yeah. think that's where they first met. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it I that or far that. and away? Or they were no, already no, no. together? They were, they, it's it's Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but yeah, you know, Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise, uh, giving everything as an actor in a film, you know, and someone of that with that work ethic as a stock car driver, you know, as a, in a stock car driver in that profession, you have to push yourself to, you know, beyond your your limits as a person in these cars pushing you know through speed limits and you know your body getting wrecked by g-forces and that focus that you have to just go around this you know this loop over and over and over and have to you know remain diligent in your driving and your skills and how much technique that that takes and discipline but in tom cruise being someone who i can totally see you know uh getting ready for this role like Doing that, going through whatever a stock car driver does to the point where he could probably, if he wasn't doing it, he could probably do that for the film himself. Uh, and you know, and, and then that character just stemming from that determination of Tom Cruise, the actor, the person. You know, it just seems like a natural uh, fit for him. And you know, he's a great character in that film, and you know, a, a great driver. So uh, yeah, that's got to be my number five, uh, fistful of drivers. Brian, your number four. So my number four comes from, uh, I think, Brad, this was one of your, um, uh, what, what did you call it? It was like your uh, male crushes? Uh, I don't know. Tell me who it is. Jason Statham? Oh, yeah. He's a man crush. Yeah. Uh, man Frank, lover. Frank Martin from The Transporter. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. The Transporter, um, he, he goes by, he, he, he lives by a certain set of rules. <laughs> One of these rules, you never open a package. So if you're a mobster or a criminal and you need something delivered, uh, Frank Martin is is a driver that you can trust because he will never open the package of whatever you're trying to deliver. Um, He's a man. He's uh, he's a man of his word. uh, But if you cross him, uh, he will kick your ass. 
Um, and uh, that's the kind of driver that I would kind of want uh, on my on my side. What's the best scene in that movie? Oh, the transporter. Yeah, it's, it's not a driving scene. It's not. It's that. I know what Brad's gonna say. It's that. Uh, it's that oil. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not oil it's slick so fight scene. You gross. <laughs> Yeah. He's slippery. You so nasty, man. <laughs> that scene is nuts. That scene is so nuts. Don't it's touch kinda, me. It's kind of cool though. Touch but, my body. What's the best? But what's the best transporter fight scene in the entire trilogy? It's three of those movies. Well, yeah, I mean the first movie is really the the second and third. No, second's the best one, Brian. Oh yeah, don't look at me like that. Second is the best one. Second one has that fight scene. With like a boat and it's on stilts oh, and they're going in and out yeah, of the boat do, and, into, yeah. and into the like garage. And yeah. then he takes his fists and he pu- punches them into watermelons and then he uses those watermelons uh, like boxing gloves. Yeah. That's the it, best it starts, fight. It starts, it starts to get a little goofy there. But I love that. I do like that first film a lot. I really like that first film. And he's a, a, a an expert driver and he's the type of driver that I, I would really want. You know who's a better Jason Statham driver, Chef Chelios, first crank. Oh, <laughs> he lands that car on the escalator. Boom. Oh, the Blues Brothers God. couldn't have done that, son. I knew you would find a way. <laughs> you will find, you always find a way, <laughs> just like life. Yep, yep. Crank finds a way into my heart time and time again. Yes. All right. Uh, <laughs> Lisa, your number four. My number four <laughs> is... About uh, is a guy who can multitask, and that is Lincoln Hawk from <laughs> Over the Top. Yeah. Ooh, Not only does he manage yes. to drive his truck, but he also manages to catch up with his son, <laughs> with his preppy son, and win a major arm wrestling competition. Then he gets right. a workout in while driving that truck. Oh, yeah, his, he does. Yeah, his, his, uh, his Bowflex. <laughs> there might not be a lot of books in that cab, but there <laughs> there is a lot of shit going on. His love. son is such a condescending shit in that movie. Yeah, I actually just saw this for the first time in the theater. They were doing a showing at This was in the theater? At the, at the Alamo. Alamo, man. I just watched it uh, last week, a uh, week and a half ago, after that, that screening. We oh, talked really? about it. Yeah, I, I I gave it three stars. I maybe maybe three movie. and a half. It's really fun. It is. I mean, it's, it's you know. That's a movie from my childhood that I adore. That I is love that peak movie. Stallone. For God, a, I love for that a movie. simple, stupid premise, like, it's really it's really lean, straightforward, and it's good. Like I think that um, when they're at the competition and they're interviewing yeah. the top competitors, Sylvester Stallone's monologue yeah. about how he tr- his My hat, hat is, is, like the, is like a switch oh, that oh. is some of the best acting i think he's done in his entire career it's yeah. so sincere yeah oh god it's utterly sincere Cause you, and cause, i because he seems when he's saying it it's for me in his he seems lost in the process like he's actually thinking about when that happens yeah and, he's like having like a revelation yeah. before our eyes yeah and um and it just goes to show he really is one with his machine. He is yeah. one with his truck. And the fact that all he really wants out of the competition is to be able to take care of his son and get a new truck. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that that's why he's on my list of drivers. Oh, yeah. so Lincoln good. Hawks. Yep. I just I just watched that like a week and a half. I love yeah, that I, film. Again, I gave it three and a half stars. I was like, shit, that was good. Uh, and that song at the end, Over the Top, is not by <laughs> Kenny Loggins, Brad. <laughs> no, nope. Uh, but you're number four. Well, who's the pie? <laughs> Doc, Kenny, Kenny Loggins is in that movie. He is, but he doesn't sing over the top. Who sings over the top? Uh, I don't know the name of that <laughs> guy. But, I, but, I, but at the end, uh, I watched it. And who uh, sings over the top? <laughs> I'm asking Siri. It's good podcasting right here. <laughs> I found a number of matches for the top. A number of matches for the top. Oh. Uh, Jeff, top gun. Get back to us, Lisa. Okay. I am BB. Uh, my number four, yes. my fourth favorite driver is the passenger turn driver, Annie, in Yondabon Speed, played by Sandra oh, Bullock. Oh, that was close. That was close for me. You know, Speed was a movie God, that when I watched the trailers as a teenager, I thought, that film looks dumb. That's oh. That bus can't stop. That's the plot. What? But then seeing the theater, what Yondabon crafted with that movie 
is a thrill ride. Man, you. It has the experience of a roller coaster. Yes, yes. It's a, it's a ton of fun, and it's the movie where, for me, honestly, Keanu Reeves, of course, I loved him in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, and I liked him in Parenthood, and I probably, you know, a bunch of other movies, not Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, but it was with speed where he graduated to a level of cool, mm-hmm. a confident cool, that I wanted to model my life after. I, you know, this was certainly post Point Break, yeah. but for me, Point Break was more about Patrick Swayze's coolness than Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Johnny Utah just did not have anything on the Swayze. Um, but but Speed, what he he sells that picture certainly. But it's really that film works because of the chemistry between him and Sandra Bullock. Yeah, and. She steals that film from everyone around her. Yeah, um, that and, was a star making performance right there for oh, her. Absolutely. Yeah. And even though the film does some really stupid jumps, you know the way she takes that bus oh, across yeah. the bridge gap is ludicrous. But, but it works. But it works. It that works. movie works. It and Dennis works. Hopper's a ton of fun in that movie, too. Yeah. He's chewing the scenery. Jeff Daniels is great as his yeah. buddy. Joe Morton as the, the police chief it's or the SWAT chief. Absolutely. Like, this was, I saw this three times in the theater. I love this movie. And like you said, it is the perfect definition of a roller coaster ride. This was probably one of my my the best theater experiences I ever had. And at the time that I saw it, it was my favorite film ever. I loved Speed. Like, you're Brian right. I used to talk about this movie all the time. It, like, it, <laughs> just like what you said, like, I've never been in a theater where it felt like I literally was on a roller coaster ride. That first experience of watching Speed, like you say, it literally was a thrill ride. Like, I never knew what that meant. Like, people will say that about movies and action films and, you know, Die Hard, like, oh, it's, you know, Die Hard on the bus and all these other movies. Oh, it's, it's a roller coaster. I'm like, I go watch the movie. Like, oh, but this movie, it literally had me on the edge of my seat the whole time. And, you know, I watched this the first time shortly after seeing Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs okay. and how that film captivates you with a limited use of set and uh, just a few characters. Yeah. And Speed does the exact same thing yeah. in an action movie context. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have not watched it in a long time. I know. I need to rewatch and that. And putting this list together, I mean, I feel like that's got to happen this week. Yeah. Like, I want to hit stop on this podcast and go watch that movie. <laughs> Man, June 10th, 1994. I remember. All Damn. Right. <laughs> Brian and his dates. He's like the why. Rain Man over here. <laughs> I was going to have Rain Man on my list. Uh, oh, him and Charlie job. Babbitt. Remember, he wanted to drive the car, but Charlie, he wouldn't. Oh. Uh, he said his dad used to let him drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was going to have that. So. Yeah. It's another one I haven't so seen. So instead, you do it. Morgan, Morgan Freeman is no, driving no, no, no. Miss Daisy. Um, <laughs> the, the, the driver in my f- this my pick. Um, <laughs> Isn't it my turn? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm sorry. So dumb. <laughs> Chatrice! <laughs> it fucks you up. All right. I just, uh, felt, I just felt Brian talking a lot. Oh, I'm sorry. I felt it too. Uh, that's why I had to intervene. <laughs> it was okay. really weird. I was disoriented. Oh, I love speed. All right. Um, <laughs> Not the drug. My number four. <laughs> I'm editing that out. <laughs> you're adding it out just the word not yeah i like speed the drug the drug right. brian's a crackhead oh mm, thanks for it balls shazam you go fast <laughs> all right uh my number four so um stupid. is in the film it's not really this character is not really focused on as being a driver there's really only one chase sequence in the film and then there's another quick short scene of him doing actual driving but within this one chase sequence um this has to be one of my favorite if we're going to do a top five of chase sequences this would be in there it's the smartest i think it's the smartest chase sequence uh i've ever seen in a film and that is but my driver in this scene is uh benicio del toro is long bow in christopher mcquarrie's the way of the gun yes um yeah. so he is uh acting as getaway driver there uh kidnapping um, I want to say is that Juliet Lewis? They're kidnapping Juliet mm-hmm. Lewis. Yeah, she's pregnant. They're coming out from right, yeah. and so uh, they 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 get chased by her bodyguards, and they dip and they try to dip out in a car, 
and uh, Tay Diggs and Nikki Cat, Nikki Cat give yeah. chase. So instead of and you would see, you would see uh, the, the 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 close cousin to this chase sequence in um, Jack Reacher, in that uh, the 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 first Jack Reacher, and that that chase sequence in Jack Reacher wasn't just an out and out balls to the wall, you know, pedal to the metal type of uh, chase sequence. It wasn't like your your you know fast and the furious or you know mad max or you know even bullet um maybe closer to bullet and that this one was more deliberate and way of the gun so instead of like barreling through traffic what happens is uh benicio del toro like any of his uh character moments regarding to action in the scene was very tactical in uh his driving and it just lent itself to this character being tactically uh proficient when it came to you know not only firearms but driving and so for me it stood out because i had never seen um a chase done this way i mean they would they would barrel down an alley and then they would slow down so, yeah, yeah. open the doors mm-hmm. and move the car slowly with their feet so uh nikki cat and tay diggs pull up behind them and they're thrown off like what the hell are these guys doing and they have the car in neutral and they're pedaling with their feet with the doors open. And then they jump out of the car and the car keeps rolling and they pop out from, you know, b- you know, but in the alley and they give a couple shots. Nikki Cat and Tay Diggs duck and take cover. And as they're ducking and take cover, they run and jump back in the car and speed off. And like, I just thought that I had never seen a, 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 a chase done like that where, yeah. where they, they, they put an intelligence into you know, allowing themselves to get a lead on their pursuers. Yeah. And th- th- that tactical uh, proficiency would echo later on in the film whenever uh, Ryan Philippi and Benicio Del Toro are in shootouts. That that shootout in the, uh, at the end of that film is freaking epic, but it's done not in a, you know, it's not in a, a John Woo stylistic way, but very tactical. And, and it would be a precursor to like something like John Wick, where, you know, everything was done how you know you would do if you were on uh, a fire team and uh, whether it be a SWAT or whether you be in the military. Those mm-hmm. are military tactics that we use. And so I just loved at how even before you get to that proficiency in the, in the film, you see that character wise uh, in Benicio Del Toro in his scene when he's driving uh, earlier in that movie. Um, yeah. It, he's, I've said it before. He's my favorite actor. Um, and that movie is one of my favorite movies. That scene is one of my favorite scenes. It is so good. If you mm-hmm. haven't seen Way of the Gun, Christian McQuarrie's first film. Yeah, um, definitely gotta check it definitely out. Definitely check that movie out. Um, so underrated. So underrated. Uh, Brian, what's your number three in your fistful of drivers? <coughs> my number three. Screw um, or Phillips? <laughs> Screw Phillips. I'm lost. It's a, it's a, you would be. It's a tool. All right, go. <laughs> Yeah, like I, think it's a, I think it's orange juice yeah, with vodka, right? Is a screwdriver orange juice with vodka? Mm-hmm. What's, what's going on? <laughs> exactly. What's that? What's that? What's that? Chartreuse. <laughs> Chartreuse. <laughs> You're number three, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My number three comes, uh, we've talked about this trilogy before, and I know certain people on our cast are not fans of this trilogy. But it's one of my favorite trilogies. That is uh, the Bourne franchise. Oh. Jason oh. Bourne. Uh, yeah, Lisa. Is it a trilogy not, a still? Because then they have like it's like five films now or something. Uh, like well, I like the quadrology. Original. Quadrology. I, I, like, I like Bourne. I like Identity Supremacy Ultimatum. Are you doing? Oh, you know, Legacy. Him on that bike. <laughs> <laughs> Was, no. Was he cold on the bike? Was he freezing? Yeah. You need a jacket? Have a parka on? Uh, no. This is, <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is um, Matt Damon's Jason Bourne, and he had a car chase in all three of the original trilogy. Uh, in the first film, uh, in that little, like, small little mini coupe. That's a great car chase. That's a great car chase. Um, in the second film, he also had one when he was being chased by Carl Urban um, in Moscow. And then the third film in New York, when he's in the police car. Um, I know you guys probably remember those. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but either way, it just shows how badass Jason Bourne is. Not just at fighting mm-hmm. and, uh, and tactical stuff, mm-hmm. but with uh, his precision driving as well. And he shows that, especially in the first film. More so, in, uh, more so I'm really going with the first film with that uh, chase with um, Jesus. What was, the, what was the girl's name? That... Franca Patente? Franca Patente. Okay. What? 
Party Girl for Tyler? Yeah, from <laughs> from run, from run, run Lola Run. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, that that chase in that small little kind of mini coupe car and how it ends with him going into the garage and going right into that parking spot. I thought it was a nice little, uh, especially for uh, a movie of that budget, and actually to do a, a car chase like that in a car in in a in a car like that. Um, and the way Matt Damon, Matt Damon, <laughs> was was Charles Trees is kicking in. Uh, was uh, was driving that car. Um, it, it was pretty badass. So yeah, I thought he was a great driver, and he showed it throughout the whole trilogy of films. Um, even in this latest movie, which wasn't that great, but that uh, car chase in Vegas, he definitely shows that he's a precision driver and really good with vehicles, um, the, the character of Jason Bourne. So he's my number three driver. Lisa, what do you got for number three? Um, my number three is Miller in Repo Man. Yeah. Yes. So what makes a better driver than an imperviousness to radiation and an understanding <laughs> of the lattice of coincidence that lays over top of everything? An good awareness pick. of the cosmic unconsciousness. Good pick, good pick. Um, so, and he, of course, has that iconic ride at the end of the film in the glowing car. And, um, you know, and it's all covered in alien residue and grossness. And Miller's not at all impressed because he is the chillest dude because he is aware of everything. <laughs> good so, pick. Yeah. That's an awesome pick. Good pick. That's Thanks, a film, man. I think that was the third Secret Society film Mason screen. Yep. Yep, and I really enjoyed it. And I can't not mention that one of the monkeys, Mike Nesmith, was executive producer on this film. Are you serious? Yeah. Did I know that? Oh, yeah. shit. He also executive produced another great driver movie, Time Rider, the saga of Lyle Swan. Yeah. Is that your number three? No. Your number three is Charlie Sheen and The Wraith. Uh, I was going to put The Wraith on there, but I knew you were going to have The Wraith on there, so he's not on. Oh, what? He's not doing obvious choices. Furiosa's not on my choice. Bullshit. Furiosa's not on there. Is Max Rockatansky on there? Max Rockatansky's not on there. They were were my one and two. Of course. But I said, you know what? I'm going to give the audience. Can I mix it up? It's hard after doing so many fistfuls to not bring up the same seven movies each time. So we should all just say right now that The Wraith, Furiosa, and Max all belong on this list. And of course, um, yeah. uh, Fozzie from the Great Muppet Caper should totally be on my fucking yep. list, but walka, I think walka, it's been walka. on every single one of my lists. <laughs> okay, so not none of those people are showing up, but who is showing up is Frank and Roger from Race with the Devil, the mm. 1975 Winnebago on the Run from Satanists movie, directed by Jack Starrett and starring Warren Oates and Peter Fonda. This is a wild Utterly 70s film about Fonda and Oates as um, motocross, not champions, but they're, they, 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 have, they build their own bikes. And they, 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 they supply the bikes to all the champions. Uh, although Fonda does have some serious skill on the bike, as does Oates. Um, but they put their, their motocross bikes on the back of their Winnebago. They're going on vacation with their wives. And they accidentally witness a satanic sacrifice of a virgin. Whoops. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> the Satanists, led by R.G. Armstrong from Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid, Sheriff Bob, yep. uh, go on pursuit, chasing these guys across the country, and they have to just haul ass in the world's largest, crappiest Winnebago. Um, it's a film that would go on to inspire another classic with another classic driver. Milton. Judgment Night? No, from oh. Drive Angry. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, uh, uh, phenomenal film from a few years ago. Wow. Um, but, you know, if you have not seen it and you are a fan of 70s exploitation films, Race with the Devil is an essential watch. It's All a right. weird-ass movie. I'm not going to say it has the most satisfying ending, but it does have an ending. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, another film starring Warren Oates as a, as a pretty decent driver. I would Not a decent, but a, that would make a great pick. Uh, Tulane Blacktop that I saw at the yeah. Sears' house. He's really interesting and really good character in that nope. film. Not picking that one. Race with the Devil. All right. Superior uh, to Tulane Blacktop. Oh, yeah? Yes. All right. I have to see that then. Uh, my number three is going to be, and this is going in line with the, uh, you know, since we're, this fistful is in uh, honor of Baby Driver, uh, my number three is actually a getaway driver. And it's a film that, um, 
We just watched, uh, I think maybe last year, Lisa got it for a homework assignment. Oh. Uh, and that is Queen Latifah yes. as Cleo oh. in uh, Set It Off. Hmm. Um, I I, I want to pick her because not like, you know, she has some extraordinary driving getaway skills, but uh, she was able to uh, elude the cops for a while. But for her her final scene, really, as a, um, as a getaway driver or as a character in that film, um, allowing her compatriots to to flee while she distracted the cops, and then her final showdown and her defiance uh, in the, the the face of those cops. What every time I watch that film, and even as <clears throat> I don't know that that film necessarily has aged well, but I will say this: um, it's definitely a better work from F. Gary Gray than uh, the Fast Fast uh, Fate of the Furious. That's a fact. Uh, but Queen Latifah's character work in that film. So up until this point, Queen Latifah was known as a rapper. She had done Living Single. Um, but she was never known for this type of character. And so, you know, on the surface, she could be this, uh, you know, this, uh, she can be looked at as just, just this, this person from, you know, the, uh, an urban uh, inner city uh, young lady, you know, breaking the law, bank robbing. But her, f- everything that built up to that final scene, um, she she had this amazingly moving performance and it's really heartbreaking and tragic ending that you know her her final moments in defiance of the law at, at the opening of that tunnel smoking that cigarette and in that slow sad uh song that was playing as she hit the hydraulics on that uh, 64 Impala and tried to mm. you know run through the the the, the cop's barricade and her car just peppered with gunfire from the cops and then you know that car coming to a smoking stop and then that door opening up and her popping out of it and then her going down in that hail of gunfire like it's just incredibly sad um you know from a performance and a character standpoint but you know just her throughout the film she was the getaway driver uh jada pinkett um uh and um goddamn uh vivica fox uh, and Kimberly Elise, they would go in to rob the banks and, and Cleo would be outside uh, waiting. She's the getaway driver. And, you know, the shit hit the fan in one of the robberies. It went went south and the cops came outside and and, 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 uh, and threw off the, the plan that they had. So Cleo, she made the most of the situation, commandeered an SUV and plowed straight through the through the bank and then plowed right out the front door in a really thrilling uh, uh, sequence uh, that was shot by F. Gary Gray. And, you know, just her character, um, I think, gave life to that group of, of women. She was the, the wild card in, in, the, in the heist group, and she played that character so well. Uh, again, and then, you know, ultimately meeting that tragic ending. Uh, for me, being surprised that I found... Um, you know, I, I found heart in her character and sympathy with her. Uh, so I have to I have to put her on my list. So she's going to be my number three, uh, Cleo from Set It Off. Now, who is the saddest getaway driver that's ever been in film? The saddest? Also from a past Lisa Itmod homework. Uh... Who's the saddest getaway driver? Dennis Haysbert and Heat. Oh man, God damn, so oh, tragic. Oh man, so <laughs> sad. <laughs> Sorry to bring it down, guys. Damn. Oh man, that's a great. I don't. I wouldn't even say that's a great pick. That's a sad pick. All right, uh, that's for our fistful of sad getaway drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you're number two. All right, so my number two, like you said, Brad, at the beginning of this podcast, uh, that uh, one of us should have something from Death Proof. And, but uh, although it is from Death Proof, I will disappoint you. It's not Stuntman Mike. God damn it, man. Um, this is uh, Tracy Tom's character Naturally. At, the, at the end, uh, you know, when they buy the Charger and they get first get chased she's by She's tapping stunt. that ass. Yeah, she's tapping that ass. And I, I love Tracy Toms in this movie. She <laughs> is almost like the equivalent of Sam Jackson uh, in in Tarantino's movies. She can she can spit his dialogue out the way that Sam Jackson can, like I haven't seen anyone else do uh, in a lot of his films. And the way she talks trash... While she's chasing Stuntman Mike, and that turn uh, that we see uh, after you know Stuntman Mike gets shot is everything is great. And 
yeah, she is just a magnificent driver in that film. I love the joy of all of those women in that car oh, after man. they've shot Stuntman Mike and revealed him to be such a total wimp. Yes. And, you know, the look on Rosario Dawson's face in that car and Zoe Bell and Tracy Toms. I mean, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, everything, everything leading up to that whole sequence, and even just you mentioning that, like, uh, when Tracy Toms is driving and Zoe Bell's on the hood of the car, because... Uh, Rosario Dawson is like really hesitant about all this happening and uh, Tarantino keeps the camera on uh, Rosario Dawson's face and you see her go from worry to like this like unabashed glee and fun that she's having and seeing that transition into her like going from worry to like really having fun in this moment I thought it was just absolutely great man like this movie just does not get enough credit that was uh, Edgar Wright's number one pick for his uh and his uh, top five uh, car chases. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I think you said car crashes. No, no, no. That was a number. F- that was number. No, that was number one. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was number yeah, one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah, like that. That whole sequence. I, I love Death Proof. I think that movie just is criminally underrated. As I think well. it's just I insanely agree. fun. Like it's I can. Really it's one movie. of those movies I can just throw on. Yeah, I love it. It's an absolutely fun film. So yeah. and Tracy Toms is just. Uh, I fell in love with her ever since that film. All right, uh, good pick. Lisa, you're number two. You don't steal a fucking cop car. Mine is Travis, <laughs> played by James Friedson Jackson in Cop Car. Good a pick. wonderful movie from 2015. A great film. In any other year, it would surely be in my top ten, Easy. but it was... Uh, 2015, tw- you were right, Lisa. That was a It was a great bananas. year. This was my number 13. Mm. Of 2015. Bananas. Yes, so good. And, um, it, like, to me, uh, we've, we've, we've discussed this on the podcast, but it's amazing child acting in that film. Oh, Both of the two boy leads were just, just so natural. Um, and you do get wrapped up in, in their, in their escapades. And, um, and of course, Kevin Bacon as the coked up sheriff trying to, who's up to his own nefarious deeds, trying to get his cop car back. Mm -hmm. And this is another great example of like, it's an action movie, but there's a lot of drama and a lot of character in it. Um, That's just utterly rewatchable. Oh, that ending, man. I gotta see it again. And uh, the director of that film, uh, John John Watts, Watts, would go on to direct the upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah. So again, the thing of Marvel, seeing someone who an unconventional directorial pick for an action movie but seeing something in him dealing what i'm assuming with that character work that strong character work in cop car and mm-hmm. saying let's apply that to you know our peter parker and so i'm i'm expecting and hoping for good things from homecoming because just off the strength of his work with those children in cop car absolutely and All kevin right. Be- bacon's oh, bitchin' man. mustache <laughs> oh yeah so oh, good <laughs> Oh yeah, and yeah. that one cameo that I, I won't that surprise pop up cameo that I won't yeah. spoil for people who haven't seen it. So good. Uh, all right, B, your number two, Batman. Yes. If we're talking drivers, um, you know my favorite car on the planet is the Batmobile mm-hmm. in all its forms. I love the Batmobile. Behind Lisa in that glass cabinet, you will see. Every rendition of the Batmobile in Hot Wheels form. Including Batcopter. Including Batcopter, yeah. Batboat, and Batcycle. Um, but when talking about Batman as a driver, even though this is not my favorite Batmobile, although I appreciate its concept, uh, this is my favorite Batmobile chase sequence. And it is in the first Christopher Nolan film, Batman Begins with the Tumblr. Mm. And how Christian <laughs> oh, Bale's yeah. Batman just obliterates Chicago or Gotham City. Yeah. You know, uh, you see Lower Wacker Drive from the Blues Brothers and that Batmobile just plowing through those cars and they're just exploding around him because he's got to get Rachel back to the Batcave. She's been poisoned yeah. by the Scarecrow. <laughs> uh, and, and when the Batmobile, you know, leaves Lower Wacker Drive and then starts hopping from rooftop to rooftop and the way that Nolan shoots those wheels just tearing through the tiles of the ceilings I love 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 the Batmobile uh, escape in Batman Begins yeah. alright so uh, before I give my number two I'm not going to let you off the hook so easily what is your favorite 
Batmobile? My favorite Batmobile um, design, honestly. 66. No. I mean, the 66 Batman is great. But my favorite Batmobile design is the Tim Burton Batmobile. Yes, yes. I mean it's just rad. It is. It is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, the Tim Burton, the eighty nine. Yeah, yeah, the eighty nine yeah, yeah. Batmobile. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, that's a that's a. I love dope. the sixty six with the bat phone. I would drive that car in real life. It's stunning. I love that. Batmobile. I imagine that the gas. I mean, it's, it's shitty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you go ten miles. You're just going from gas station to gas station. Man, <laughs> that that one year at Comic Con when they had all the Batmobiles out there on the, on that, that yard so cool. on the side and of the you're convention just like center. Batman and Robin. What the fuck? Man, it, it was so cool to see all of the all of the Batmobiles. That out was there. our 2011, wasn't that the first yeah. one? No, that was no. the one. I didn't go to that one. Yeah, I think oh. it was 2012. Yeah, I think it was 2012. Yeah, that was 2012. That yeah. was a great Comic Con you missed. That's yeah. all right. Uh, my second favorite Batmobile is the animated series, the Art Deco, Ooh, yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah, stretch limo look. I love. Oh same. yeah, love that Batmobile. Same. Uh, in yeah. the comic books, I really like the weird ass Batmobile that occurs like halfway through Grant Morrison's Batman Incorporated run. It's got actually it's not Batman Incorporated. It's the Batman and Robin run. It has these red tinted windows uh, mm. that stretch across almost the entire body and at one point the car flies so mm. you know, okay like interesting all right uh my number two fistful of drivers uh, at this point i'm thinking about the the driver similar to cole trickle who uh, he he loves to be behind the wheel and this is going back to baby driver um yes uh baby loves his music but you get a sense that when he is behind the wheel with his music he loves to drive he loves to be behind the car he is one with the machine and not just his machine of choice or the red car you see in the beginning but any car he is behind the wheel of he is one with that machine he loves to drive and so with that idea in mind um i'm going with uh emil hirsch as Speed Racer mm. from the Wachowskis Speed nice. Racer. Um, first of all, talking about a fun film and an underrated film, I mean, that film is pure joy. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, it is the closest to a live action anime or just a live action cartoon, period. Uh, Christina Ricci's great in it. John Goodman is just such a, uh, you know, Susan Sarandon mm-hmm. is so, you know, I want her as my mom to be my mom. And then, you know, Speed Racer as. You know, a, a kid, but purely focused and driven, pun intended, um, wanting to step out of the shadows of his brother, but also, you know, wanting to be the best and, 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 and win all these races and then having this mysterious racer X. I mean, there are, there are uh, chase sequences in this film that don't get talked about nearly enough. Uh, the inventiveness of it, of the, the car foo, uh, the, 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 the cars actually fighting one another jostling for uh, jostling for position uh, pole position and then at the end of the film specifically um there's that moment when speed is coming down the final stretch and his love for driving and passion and his brother's words and, and his brother's motivation and then speed having that drive and wanting to push himself and pushing that car beyond its limits to the point where he's not seeing the the racetrack anymore He's just he's going beyond the infinite, like in uh, 2001, and, and the screen just becomes this blur of psychedelic color and and speed visualized. That moment, Brian, you talk about um, uh, being on the edge of your seat and watching speed. I mean, that moment. I remember seeing this in Centerville in the movie theater. It was probably like me, and like maybe 15 other people in there, and just that sensation. The Wachowskis visualizing the bliss of someone who lives for the speed mm-hmm. and having speed racer push himself and push his body and push that car at the same time and become one with it and to go beyond its limits and his limits, uh, how they visualized that was just breathtaking and just the perfect joyous cap to a, 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 a fun, a pure fun film and just how that, that race ends and the car comes to a stop and the tires are melted off because he was hauling so much ass was just, was just perfect. And, um, and it's just him as a character and how, you know, he would, how they have the, uh, you know, you, you play in a video game where you do a lap and then you race your ghost, your next lap, you try to best yourself and you can see a, a transparent, 
uh, version of your previous lap and you raced your ghost. Well, they have that in the movie Speed Racer, but he's racing his brother's ghost and trying to, to be better than his brother. And then that whole personal, uh, you know, personal struggle between that and his brother's uh, legacy and, and building his own. And then, again, how that comes full circle to that final moment uh, through that psychedelic tunnel of light and speed is just something that I... I, I I genuinely love that and just get goosebumps when I see that scene like every time. That's just a a, a, a purely fun film. I, I need, love I need that. To, I need to see that from beginning to end because I've never seen the I've never seen the movie. I've seen you show me bits and pieces, but I've never oh, seen. I think it's you a would gorgeous, really like. That. I've never now. seen the whole film. Yeah. It's a gorgeous Same. Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah agreed. I yeah, I love that film and it would have been on my list except I knew Darren was uh, going to have it along with the Wraith. So that's why the Wraith and Furiosa. <laughs> And uh, uh, Speed, Speed Racer. Racer. Yeah. Racer X also. Matthew, Matthew Fox. Fox. Yeah. So cool. Yes. Yes. He would be he'd be a good pick. If if you had picked Speed Racer, I would I could have easily gone with Racer X. He's so good in that. Uh but yeah, you need to check that out, Brian. Yeah, like it's I a wanna... it's a really good, genuinely like uh where's his heart on his sleeve. Yeah. It's it's you know, it's yeah. a, a very heartfelt movie. One of the I think it's one of my favorite Wachowskis uh film from the Wachowskis. It's my favorite Wachowski film. I, I would think so. I, I, you know, I like it better than the Matrix films. Oh yeah. So, better than Bound? Oh yeah. <laughs> I like I like the Wachowski movies. Yeah, yeah. I do I do too. I, I do like too. Jupiter's Ascending. Whoa. All right, Brian, you're number one, 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 oh, one, go, one, go, one. Go there. Uh, and you're physical driver. <laughs> so um this goes to a film, a franchise that you guys know that I adore up until this latest entry. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> no, this oh. would be uh, the Fast and the Furious. Oh. You know, a lot of people would think Dom Toretto. You know, Ooh. that's you know, that's the the, the best driver out there. No, uh, nah. this this one I want to pay uh, I want to pay honor uh, to the late great Paul Walker, uh, the character of Brian O'Connor. Uh, he is the definitive driver of the Fast and Furious franchise. It's not Dom Toretto. It is Brian O'Connor. Uh, the proficiency, the precision, and how he drives in all of these movies, from the first film to the second film to the fifth film, um, especially that fifth film, and the way that Justin Lin shoots Paul Walker, even in those interior shots, uh, I know a lot of it is probably staged and green screen, but the way that he shifts the gears, the way that, you know, just everything, like Paul Walker is almost like he was built to be in a car. And uh, I, I just, I love seeing him. And especially those, that, those, that small trilogy, four, five, and six, to see him in those movies and to see how he, uh, to just to just to see him in the car and to see the precision of how he how he moves how he how he works how he's framed how he's shot, uh, the way Justin Lin works with Paul Walker in those vehicles, it's just absolutely phenomenal. It's 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 great to see him in those movies. He's also really great as another driver in the film Joyride. That's a film right. that I don't yeah. think gets enough love yeah. from John Dahl. I like, John I like Dahl. Joyride. It's a, yeah, I think it's a really yeah. good, uh, solid B movie. Yeah, Lily Sobieski yeah. and Steve Zahn. I saw it in the theater. Yeah, Rusty Joy, Joyride. Nail. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rusty Nail. Yeah, I do remember that. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, Paul Paul Walker. He just he felt like he was an actor that was built to be behind the wheel. Um, and it's uh, it's unfortunate that we lost him in that same way, uh, but rest in peace. And uh, yeah, he's definitely worthy of being my number one for the best driver. All right, uh, wife dork. Yes, I have no idea who <laughs> your your number one could be, uh, I, but when you say it, it's going to be oh, of course. I, I don't know if you'll say that. I'll, I'll, I'll wonder what what you'll think about this choice, but see. it's just number one in my heart today. You know how I am with fistfuls, <laughs> and my number one driver is Julie Gianni, Cameron Diaz, Shit! From Vanilla Sky. <laughs> oh, yes! That's, talk about sad ass driver. <laughs> oh man! You know, she got in that car. With an objective. Oh. She fucking nailed it. Yeah, she did. She killed she, herself and she, gave her oh, her, her jilted lover a, a face she, full of uh, perspective. She definitely reached her final destination. <laughs> she did. We just rewatched this for um, Andy oh, Garrison's man. birthday at the Alamo Winchester. 
And I just had such a fun time watching this in the theater. That was I cannot so great. talk about it enough. That was so great. So great. But that car crash Jesus scene Christ. where she's driving and, and at first you don't you know, you mm. don't feel the danger, but mm. as she starts kind of losing her mind and accelerating and driving more erratically, like the tension sets in. You know what sets it off? Tom David, Cruise. Is no, no, no. David, do you believe in God? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. But Tom Cruise's face at that moment when he realizes what's oh, yeah. happening. He's like, oh, no, I, I love you. Okay, I love you. <laughs> yeah. It's like that, and it's also her saying, like, four times. You came in me four times. That means something. You're like, that is such uh. an ugly horrifying moment that whole car ride her trying to find value in her existence through and then the crash the The crash crash is is so scary it is horrific the impact so scary yeah watching this film for Andy's birthday last month I put Vanilla Sky in my top 100 hell yeah dude oh wow it's a great movie it's awesome yeah it's a great movie it's a great movie It's It's, it's a it's a movie that you have to talk about and you have to um you have to give the after film time to really appreciate it because the first time I watched it I mean I was watching it for my homework yeah. and and even though I I was analyzing the movie and I was understanding the movie at first I just did not like that feeling that it gave me yeah. because it is very sad and it's you know it hits on those like little hot button issues, like issues of vanity and identity and and, and uh, mortality that that you know will upset anybody. But our you know I don't want to say mortality is particularly upsetting. Like if I died, that would be the worst. Mm. But you know it 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 touches all of those like squidgy places in you where you're just like, oh, I don't really want to think about that. I don't I don't really want to think about, you know, having an idealized situation. And, it, and its packaging is so deceptive. You got all this this music and these, these beautiful people and this light, airy, like, this atmosphere, but you feel so much the, you, unease. Yeah, you feel the lack of reality in it, and it's, um, it fucks with your footing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You feel unbalanced yeah. as you watch it. Um but that driving scene, I mean, it sticks with you. Yeah. It's scary. That was yeah. a great pick, Lisa. Thank that was you. A great pick. Oh, good. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Brad, you're number one. My number one is, again, from a exploitation film from the 1970s. Um, the Roger Corman produced Paul Bartel directed Death Race 2000. Yeah. And the driver in particular that I want to highlight is David Carradine's Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Um, you know, I love Machine Go Machine Gun Joe Verturbo played by Stallone, but Frankenstein, you know, it's it's a, it's a weird weird movie tonally because it's um certainly mocking and uh uh ridiculous it's the story of this dystopian society in which, you know, a cannonball run like of uh, entertainment occurs every year, in which drivers race across America, try to hit geriatrics and paraplegics for extra points. Um, it, it's it's angry in its comedy, certainly, um, and it's also super cool in its silliness and and David Carradine doesn't play for laughs he's he's incredibly earnest you know when you first meet him he's dressed all in black leather and you see this scarred burned face in the eye holes in the mouthpiece yeah. um and, and eventually that's revealed when he pulls that mask off that that's all fake that's all show that's all entertainment um, you know, Paul W.S. Anderson attempted to adapt this story yeah. with Jason Statham and Joan Allen and, and, and pulled, tried to pull a lot of the social commentary from the original film into the modern day, uh, you know, with reality TV and us glued to our phones and, uh, and, and us uh, distancing ourselves from humanity. But honestly, it's in Paul Bartel's version that is so absolutely ridiculous that I feel 
the true connection with what's going on now in uh, social media yeah. um, and, and those themes that we talked about in Colossal with oh, being shit. able to distance yourself from the people in Korea. So why not just stomp on them? Yeah. Um, that, that's all happening in, in Death Race 2000. It just happens to also be uh, draped in this incredibly exploitative uh, narrative. But Paul Bar- Bartel is saying a lot in the movie, too. Uh, yeah. But Frankenstein, David Carradine, that dude's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a great driver, and he can totally take down Stallone and Mary Warnoff and all those other people that are going for the title. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, good pick. I think I knew that was going to be your number one. I knew it was going to be somewhere on your list. Uh, yes. I love that movie. Yeah, great pick. Uh, have you seen his revi- uh Corman's... Um, is it a sequel to that or a reboot? Uh, it's it? so like I, I I don't know because I have not watched it, and Did the reason know? I haven't watched it is because modern day Roger Corman films don't quite work for me. Yeah, uh, there's a you know uh, there's a lack of genuine genuinity 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 that's, truth that's truth maybe <laughs> uh, uh, to the film yeah. that um, you know like. Hobo with a shotgun and Grindhouse and Machete, where they're trying to be exploitation films, yeah. but can't quite replicate yeah. the original. Right. So I've decided not to watch the new yeah. Death Race. You want to remember him how he was. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. All right, man. Um, my number one, similar to uh, your number one pick, in that there is this uh, sort of cross country race. Uh, these different crazy, wacky racers, um, and uh, is, a, is a super cool driver. Um, and it also stems from a, a previous homework assignment for you, Brad. Hey. And it's uh, it's JP from uh, my number 10 favorite film of all time, and that's the, the animated film Redline. Um, and I this one also stems from someone who just has the only thing that matters to him is being behind the wheel of a car. And, and winning and being the best driver that he can be. And, you know, there's that. And also, you know, as an artist, um, I, I've, I've sang this film's praise about this uh, plenty of times as far as inspiration goes. It just, it, it you know, the, the, the artistry on display and the hand-drawn animation and their conveying speed and is mind-blowing to me. And to show uh, JP push himself. Uh, so, you know, Speed Racer is the live action version of uh, Redline, and, and, and as far as like speed and, and cars doing crazy shit and having weapons and fighting each other, and and Emil Hirsch pushing himself to his limits. But what animation benefits you that uh, you know Speed Racer could never do is you know taking that reality and just stretching it to the most absurd, hyper realistic boundaries and then beyond you know so when speed racer uh hits the gas and, and goes pedal to the metal and fast as he can you know you have this psychedelic environment around him like he's going through this tube of of light but in red line when jp puts that liquid crystal thing in his engine this to be the catalyst for this uh nuclear explosion that propels him forward not only does the the light around him bend, but his entire reality stretches, and you're able to convey that through animation in a way you just can't do that in in live action. The closest would be like the first Fast and the Furious film. Remember these to hit the NOS yeah. and like it would kind of stretch out the environment. <laughs> well, like JP in Redline, like his car, his body, his nose bleeds, his eyeballs are pushed to the back of their sockets as he is just uh, propelled forward at unfathomable. Uh, you know amounts of g-force and it's just the most inventive and creative animation i've seen regarding uh you know the the articulation uh, uh, the visualization of the sense of speed and that movie is another movie that's just pure it's just pure joyous fun and a celebration of the art form and jp is the poster boy for that celebration of the art form and i you know i every time i think about driving and you know he comes to mind because of that film and his bad, you know, any good driver worth his weight behind the wheel has to have, you know, has a badass signature car. Michael Knight has Kit, 
You know, mm-hmm. the Dukes of Hazard have the General Lee. Uh, the Wraith has the Wraith. Um, and JP has that yellow Trans Am. That's just amazing. So, yeah. Um, was it going to be Burt Reynolds and his Trans Am smoking the band? That's what I was thinking. Oh, uh, Cannonball Run. Or Cannonball. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, you could have done your whole fistful of Cannonball I Run. <laughs> I want, yeah. Cannonball Run was on my list for a while. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm not at all surprised that Red Line is your number one. I thought it was going to be two because I thought, again, you're going to use this opportunity to talk about Furiosa. Man, you know, I, I, so I was going to take the, I wasn't going to do Max and then I wasn't going to do Furiosa, but I was going to do Nux. That was when I had that long pause and I couldn't remember. <laughs> I was going to do Nux uh, because that motherfucker kept control of his car after losing a wheel told oh, yeah. told homeboy to get on the back to do some counterbalance like he was determined to impress a morton joe and get furiosa back and so yeah i can, i'm not going to go into this tangent about that film <laughs> uh it's i'm overdue but anyway that's going to do it for our fistful do this after you checked out baby driver or while you're waiting in line um, hit us up on social media and let us know what your fistful of drivers are. Uh, you can do that at ItModcast on Twitter, at ItModcast on Instagram. Send us pics of your favorite uh, drivers. Ooh, that'd or, be fun. Mm-hmm. Do a collage thing. Yeah. Get, or, get creative. Or uh, at ItModcast <laughs> on Facebook. Um, you can follow Brian Young, the Turtle Dork, at the Turtle Dork on Instagram, at the Turtle Dork 1 on Instagram. I'm sorry. <laughs> At the Turtle Dork on Twitter and uh, Brian William Young on Facebook. The lovely wife dork uh, is at Sidewalk Siren on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterbox. Uh, Brad Gullickson can be found behind the wheel at Mouth Dork on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Letterbox, and Untapped. And I'm Darren Smith, the Disco Dork on all social medias. That's going to do it for us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy Baby Driver again and again. Uh, be on the lookout for our Comic Con preview cast that's coming up. I'm so excited. Uh, it Mod Film Club is finishing out with uh, Die Hard. That's Brian's pick. So return to John McTiernan's classic. Revisits uh, Lisa's pick, uh, Argyle and the Limo Driver. <laughs> um, and also It Mod Homework returns after we get back from Comic Con. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, yeah, we're we're coming on the home stretch of our, our, our holy pilgrimage to Comic Con. So be on the lookout for just a shit ton of Comic-Con coverage oh, and, and leading up to our uh, uh, departure. And once we get there, we're just going to flood social media with Comic-Con. So we hope you love it because it's coming. Um, that's going <laughs> to do it for us. Thank you all for listening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Watch some movies. Drive safely. And until next time. Mm-hmm.